Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Tran and I are here to respond to UT's response to the demands by our black student athletes at the University of Texas. A very important day, one that has been met with a lot of positivity from Coach Herman, many of the players going on social media responding, saying this is a good day for, you know, good first step forward and, and a good positive vibe of the change that they've they've tried to bring to the school. So, Tran, I just wanted to get your immediate thoughts on uh, your big tech takeaways from UT's response. So, uh, by UT's response, you're talking about the administration or the, or the athletes? The administration. So, I really do like the changes that they made, especially I love the fact that we we're utilizing our Heisman Trophy winners as the new name brand of the stadium. It's it to to me, the people who put their blood, sweat, and tears into the stadium are the people that sh that should be up there, you know. So, I'm I, I'm with it that way. Um, the 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 Joe Jamal uh, building, whatever. I'm sorry. sorry the field, but, uh, yeah, yeah, the field and the family, yeah. and and it was cool that they, you know, they obviously got permission from the family, and I believe mm -hmm. from 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 something I've read, it was the family's suggestion for for Earl Campbell and Ricky Williams so um, to be honored yeah to be honored so it's a good you know positive outcome for for the Jamal family for for Texas Longhorn fans um it was I did hear some people and I kind of, and I thought of it at first I'm like damn we couldn't get a Vince Young field because Earl Campbell and Ricky both already have statues at the stadium but, um, you know, they wanted to celebrate. I think they wanted to kind of go down that Heisman type of feel and, and vibe. Mm -hmm. and, and also some of the recent things with Vince Young at the school that got kind of ugly publicly recently may have shied them away from that. But uh, lots of good here. I know we're going to get to the eyes of Texas here in a second because that's, that was the big talking point with the demands initially. And that's a big talking point here today, as the university says, they are going to stand by the eyes of Texas remaining as their alma mater with some tweaks in there. But um, one of the big things that was highlighted was the investment in on-campus and off-campus support groups, communities, just with for Black students. And uh, the, the quote here was that work to recruit attract, retain, and support black students. That is huge because mm -hmm. as, as, as UT has a very dark history when it comes to their treatment of black students and something that they've not tried to necessarily hide from recently, but more so tried to educate and say, hey, this is what we did that was wrong and how people were treated and why we relate to the party to be very, very frank and honest, whether it was integration, uh, of of athletics, how we were recruiting black athletes, and that was a perception that has permeated throughout Texas and a lot, for a lot of black high school players for several decades, even after UT integrated. So, one of the things is the uh, while the school has done a great job of adjusting to modern times and 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 making this a home for for a lot of black athletes, no doubt about it. They've, I don't think they've ever been super proactive in saying, we want you at our school. We're welcoming um, uh, the, the community. And here's what we're also going to do to support our Black folks that are on campus now to make sure that they feel a part of an inclusive society where their voices, their talents are, are represented um, to the ability that they should be. So that was very, very powerful because I was worried when they said they wanted to donate towards Black Lives Matter. And I, I said then, a lot of people keep getting this mixed up on my previous video. I said then, they cannot do that. That is a political organization. You cannot donate, you're a public university. But what you can do is find groups in the community and find groups on campus to work mm -hmm. with and let your dollars flow there as you're, as you're backing um, support. So that's a great one. Uh, there were some, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Some buildings got renamed. Some didn't. Yep. Um, but overall, yet. I think the, yet. yet. And, yes. and, and so that's, that's, that, that yeah. also speaks to what many of the players, including Coach Herman, said today. 
great first step, more changes, more progress that have to, and we always have to, we have to encourage that at our school. We're, we're telling these kids they're going to a school where they always say, what starts here changes the world. Mm -hmm. And we're teaching them that. So we have to allow them to use what they're being taught there and what they're learning real time to help change the world. So I'm very, very proud of, of our student athletes. Caden Stearns leading can, the charge. Over can, can we echo that again? I mean, can we repeat that again on how mature they handled this whole situation? I was, I was very, I was very scared because I didn't see any of the Twitter stuff. Because I, I, I texted you and I said, "Hey, did you see the, uh, did you see the announcement?" And I said, and then I had no idea. I was, I was wondering, you know, is it, is, is the feedback good or bad? Because I, I wasn't looking at that. Um, and the fact that you know the compromise that they made, uh, they, they're very comfortable with it. And the fact that they're not shying away from people tweeting directly at them on, hey, you're not upset that. 100% of the stuff wasn't changed or anything like that. He said, no, you, I mean, we want to educate people on the, the past, like you said, the, the dark history or whatever. Um, the eyes of Texas, we'll, I know we'll get into that in a little bit, but, um, but you know, the fact that they voiced their opinions and they were actually heard by the administration and we are the first school to do that. Is it's so important to understand that you we weren't going to get every well the the student athletes weren't going to get a hundred percent of everything right up front, but the fact that the administration is willing to hear them out it's it's just a, it's just a win for them. And the administration didn't dump this. I saw somebody else tweet this earlier, and I totally agree. I, I think it was um, Eric Nolan from Inside Texas. They didn't they didn't do a Friday news dump. They did this Monday morning. They came mm -hmm. out. Led started the week with it. It seems to me that they there was good communication and they were in alignment, which is one of Tom Herman's favorite words <laughs> uh, as a school because is those tweets came out from the University of Texas with a statement. It seemed like everyone from the, the from the athletic standpoint was already ready to go with, hey, you know we have been working on this in the background conversations were being had, which goes to uh, Overshone's issue a few weeks ago about that lack of dialogue. So maybe that helps speed, speed some things up. We do have an interim president and he made his statement as well. Um, as we get into the eyes of Texas, before I touch on that, um, Julius Whittier is getting a statue uh, who was the first black Texas Longhorn football player. So that's awesome as well. Um, and, and to see, see, see those tributes out there um, long overdue, in my opinion. Now to the eyes of Texas, they said, we, own, we will own, acknowledge, and teach about all aspects of the origins of the eyes of Texas as we continue to sing it moving forward with the redefined vision that unites our community, um, which is a very interesting way to put that. And I think they are putting the onus on themselves, however they move forward about it, knowing, and as the interim president said, how divisive that, that's, that the argument around the song and its origins have become. I'm curious to see what approach they take. It seems the players are uh, mixed there, but at least they've given the players the option, the, option. the comfort yep. to say, hey, if you don't want to sing the song, you don't have to. There won't be a requirement. And I hope we can be mature as a, fa as a fan base and as adults to be respectful of the athletes that do choose to sing and the athletes that do not choose to sing. No different than when we're back in the stands, whenever that happens, that were respectful of one another as well. But let me get your thoughts there as well, Tran, on, on uh, the eyes of Texas and how you see that that coming about for, for Texas. So, you know, I, de I definitely love the fact that they gave them the options to uh, to sing it or not sing it, you know, uh, put the onus on the players themselves, wh whoever wants to sing it, because it, it is a part of the culture and you know, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be taken away from people who bleed burnt orange to happily sing that after a big win just because some idiots a long time ago made a mockery out of, out of a whole entire race because of it. Um, but at the same time, you know, just, just understanding the history about it, understanding the frustration the players had with it. That's, that's where it lies. I don't, I don't think any of the players are going to, are going to be upset if people sing it, if they're, if they're singing it just to celebrate the team. I don't think so at all. So, you know, I, I, I like I like having the option for the for the players to sing it and the team to sing it as well. 
I think understanding and talking both on both sides. I mean, you can't force change is hard. Yeah. And, and all all 2020 is doing is bringing about change. It's, it's been a disruptive year. It's been a year where we've been confined and, and challenged with so many different things, right? And we're still going through it. So I, I do think what Caden Stearns shared, and, and he's also become a member of the uh, police, the on-campus uh, review board for, for, for the community, which I think is also very, very important to continue having those dialogues and being proactive. These guys aren't, this isn't just lip service. And, and I think that's very, very important to lay out as we discuss these things. Um, but I am curious to see what the school does. I, I know people, people have already started on Twitter, jumping on different UT players, uh, Twitter asking them directly, are you going to, are you going to sing the song or will you not? And all those type of things. And, you know, and, and the judging will happen because it's human nature, but I encourage us to be better and just listen and respectful of other people because Kate Stearns, especially let out, said in one of his tweets, of understanding both sides and understanding mm -hmm. that this is a tradition that people were raised in and grew up in with no, you know, vile, racist, no one even knowing about it, right? But it's also hard and it's something I've always struggled with any old traditions or relics that, that are, for me personally, this is just me personally speaking, I've always struggled with any of them because to me, what when I the more I learn and the more I, I dig on stuff, there's always something, you know, vile behind it sometimes. And it, and, and it can be a struggle for, for me as a black man, but at the same token, um, how we, how we try to look, look at and go forward and try to divide those two things and do make it, uh, you know, where it's a moment for us to unite as Longhorn nation, as a community, because that's always been my big takeaway from the moment. It's not, the song or the lyrics or anything like that it's all of us having our horns up unified as one win or lose so I'm, I'm i'm very very impressed with the response and i'm glad to see that our players are happy um or, or not happy but they're they they feel like their voices are heard they feel like they're they're getting something accomplished and they are so and you know, we uh can we touch on real quick on what this means towards the football team like in the few in the future because once so, again texas is the first team to actually do this well i mean we've seen change we've seen some schools have taken action in different manners and I, and so the, so Ooh, the prestige the, the the prestige of this school comparative compare sure. so like alabama have they done that a&m have they have they take necessary have they taken next well, necessary will say steps that, Mississippi schools helped get rid of the state flag, but though that was more of like a unified twenty-year effort. Well, they were um, also celebrating a second place, second place war champion. So, <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> so, but to your question, I think it's an important one because how does this factor into the team right now? I have two answers for you. With this team, this is the type of stuff you, they make sports movies about, right? Where mm -hmm. all you know, all these guys were. Remember the Titans? Mm -hmm. You got the white kids and the black kids, and they they integrate the school, and they have a hard time at first at camp, but then they find common ground and come together as a football team. Sports always kind of seems to these these larger than life things or outside of the field that can be impactful. I think this is something that can really, really draw guys in together where you truly are playing for the dude next to you or for the brother mm -hmm. next to you on a different level than even you were like, I'm sure they loved each other in 2018 and 2019, even when some of the nonsense was going on in the locker room. But now it's different when you've been through something together and you're fighting an enemy more than just the team across from you. Um, how it plays in recruiting. I'll let you take that one though. Oh, positively. <laughs> I mean, e easily. But um, if they're the first team to do it and, you know, we have people in state rivals who we have, we've been honestly been going head to head for for some of the top prospects uh, are sitting there arguing about a statue. I mean, what are you going to go to someone who where they're divisive or are you going to go to a, an aligned team where you you forgot in your whole spiel that, you know, how how much it, how much 
more so are you going to work harder for your for your coaching staff that had your back throughout this whole throughout this whole process who encouraged you to actually use your voice here at Texas you know that's that's something uh, I'm I'm not, I'm not saying that they didn't have the ba- the backing of the students but there was always there was always a question of is is there are they the real leaders of the team? You know, the, uh, sure. are the coaches, are they really listening to the team? There's always that, but I don't, I don't find that that's going to be an issue this year. And if you have that, if you have that back into the coach and the, and the players can actually come forward and say, yeah, they, they'll have your back. You know, the, the large, the, the big time recruits, they, they, they will definitely perk up. I mean, you're hearing a lot of stuff there where um, uh, your, your school, your school uh, just got Howard one of the University. top, yeah, yep. one of one of the top uh, recruits for basketball. So I mean, they're looking at HBCUs. So, absolutely, and 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 there's going to be some opportunities for some kids to go to HBCUs. I think more so in sports like basketball than football, where it's practical. Mm-hmm. Although we'll see. Uh, but in terms of just the overall landscape, yeah, there's some there's going to be opportunities for some schools that have been progressive for a while to step in and say, Hey, by the way, we've never had these problems. We've only, you know, like the Ohio mm-hmm. States and some of the schools that were, or, or even on the West coast, like a UCLA that did celebrate their black athletes long, long before we did. However, current time to your point with the coaching staff, Tom Herman, having people in the building, like a Brian Carrington who are leading that type of charge with these young men, the parents will identify that and see that. So, Man, I appreciate you joining. I know we got we got to jump here because we got some stuff going on, and it was just more of a midday reaction. <laughs> but um, Tran, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate and, you, man. Um, it's a good day. Just, it's a yeah, good day. no, it is a good day. <laughs> it's a good positive step forward from uh, the initial day of demands, which was June twelfth. So, guys, weigh in in the comments. Make sure you show us some love and and, and uh, let us know what you think of all of the reactions and the statements from the University of Texas. Guys, remember, horns always up.